Hey there, welcome back to another video this time around. It is my rant on the 1972 horror sequel, Beware the Blob. Now, first I want to thank Jonathan for requesting this review and for sending me this film on Blu-ray. And if there's another film, TV show, or topic that you'd like to see me discuss in the future, feel free to join my Patreon or uh, donate to my PayPal. The link to both is in my video description. Now, but where the blob is a sequel to the blob, the 1958 film. And it's a movie that I had seen years ago. And at the time I thought it was one of the worst films I had ever had the displeasure of sitting through. But now as I've seen more films, I will say this. I, I think that I've definitely seen worse than this, but I still felt this was pretty damn bad. This is pretty pathetic, and I would say that this would be up there on a list of worst horror sequels for me, because it makes the first film, which in itself was flawed, look like a masterpiece in comparison, as well as something like Kalatiki or other blob ripoffs, and I mean... It definitely doesn't even come remotely close to capturing the same level of quality as the 1988 remake. It's directed by Larry Hagman. Now, if that's a name that sounds familiar to you, he's JR from Dallas. And in fact, when this film came out on home video initially, they had a tagline that said, the film shot by JR, because, you know, Dallas was a big hit show. And... I don't think that marketing tactic did the film any favors because it's not like it wound up uh, uh, breaking records in terms of rental sales or sales in general. And it's a film that is the epitome of a cash grab. It's only in existence because somebody got a hold of the rights. I think it was Larry Hagman. He got a hold of the rights to the Blob IP and decided to make a movie. That's it. And sometimes that can turn into something that's surprisingly decent or surprisingly fun to watch, even despite its dubious origins. This is not one of those films. And the direction by Larry Hagman is horrible. Like, this guy does not know what the hell he's doing most of the time. He doesn't know how to shoot these scenes with a blob in a way that makes that makes these sequences scary, creepy, atmospheric. All the shots are shot in the same way with the same type of lighting that just expose the blob as nothing but but a fake effect. It looks like a bunch of strawberry preserves. That's what it does. It looks like jam. It's like, all right, let's this guy just get they just bought a whole uh, year's supply of strawberry jam and decided to use it for the production of the film. And it's a film that also is trying to be a comedy. So if you're going to do that, you also need to have comic talents. You need to know how to have comic timing and to really get the most out of a comedic scene. And he can't do that either. So. It's a badly shot film when it comes to being a horror movie, and it's an equally as badly shot film when it comes to being a comedy, because it, it just doesn't cut it either way, and doesn't get great performances out of the cast, even though there are a lot of genuinely well-known names in this cast who have little bit roles in it, like Burgess Meredith and Dick Van Patten and... uh others I, I mean it's surprising when you look at this cast Garrett Graham is another one Cindy Williams uh but for whatever reason no one really is ever delivering a performance that is that it, that is anything but awful or middle of the road or average at best no one is is particularly good or great when it comes to their performances in this and a director who's directing a film for the first time has no experience doing this and is is just basically uh, making a fan film if you really think about it this is just an expensive fan film before fan films were a thing and 
it's got a screenplay by uh, Anthony Harris and Jack Woods. And that screenplay is arguably even shittier than the direction, which is saying a lot because the direction is really bad. I mean, there are scenes in this film that are shot in a sewer that have no good lighting. Like, I think they just light it with a candle or some shit or a lighter. You can't see shit in the scene. It's not like it would make the scene good or or at all uh, uh, significantly better because it's still but where the blob but it's still one of those things where it's just expected of even the most average director to just shoot a scene properly and light it properly. But that's not the case here. And also, you don't have a variety of camera techniques or pans or zooms or angles or anything to really liven up the direction or or to break up the monotony of of the visuals because you have a director who just flat out doesn't know what he's doing. He's just given a camera and a budget and just allowed to just shoot scenes. And the result is bad because that's what happens pretty much every time when you just hand somebody a camera. Like if somebody just handed me a camera and a bunch of money, I'm pretty sure the direction would suck too because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So the writing is another case of incompetence because it's trying to be a horror comedy and that is a fine line that you really have to handle properly. You can't just half-ass a horror comedy because then you have a film that sucks equally as a horror film and equally as a comedy. You have to do both of them equally well. And that's not the case here. I didn't laugh once. Oh yeah, there's this guy who runs around in the middle of the street butt-ass naked. I'm supposed to laugh because he's just a, it's just a naked fat guy running around? That's not funny to me. Uh, in fact, it's kind of horrifying. In fact, that might be scarier than the blob itself. This, this fat guy's naked hairy ass. Uh... How about the various scenes of these hippies? Or how about Garrett Graham's character who dresses up like a gorilla and is just making monkey noises for half his screen time? Hilarious, right? Garrett Graham for Fan of the Paradise and and plenty of other films like Child's Play 2. Now he's just going, ooh, 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 ah, 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 And it's supposed to be peak comedy? How about the stuff involving the the African-American couple at the beginning of the film where there's this guy who works for some place and brings home a sample of the blob for some reason, never explain why, puts it in the fridge and his wife doesn't like it in there, leaves it out so then it thaws out and then eats them both. But how about all that going on with those two and the whole shtick is just the 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 uh, husband or the boyfriend, he just likes to get drunk. He's an alcoholic. Ha 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 ha, f- hilarious, so funny. This guy has a drinking problem, and it's the funniest shit ever. Um, How about the opening of the film? The opening of this movie is one of the most random openings I've ever seen in anything. It just opens up with scenes of a kitten just running around in a field. I'm not making this shit up. Like, it literally just opens up like that. There's just a kitten running around in the field with some of the most obnoxious, silly, stupid music you will ever hear in your entire goddamn life. So, it can't even get the opening titles correct. So, you have opening titles that are just embarrassing and stupid and just silly on stupendous levels. You have these attempts at comedy that are just painfully forced and bad you have the horror stuff where the blobs just starts eating people but the way that these characters are written they're either boring or they're annoying so you don't really care whether they live or die there's this whole subplot involving this guy who's mad at these two teenagers for uh i guess driving a little bit too fast by him 
to the point where it made him drop his beer and now he wants them to be arrested and then and then you find out in a twist that he's the owner of this bowling alley which is where the film has its climax because yeah that's exactly what you think of when you think of the blob bowling alleys so yeah there's a climax at a bowling alley which is also an ice rink conveniently and i remember there was a, a moment in the script where they said that the ice rink is broken and it doesn't work and that's why uh you know they're they're it's closed i swear to god i swear there was something in the script where it's like the ice rink is broken it's closed for repairs um and they just fix it randomly at the end they just flip a switch and now it works of course it works conveniently now at this moment because you need it to work so the blob can be defeated and be frozen by the ice rink but at the same time i'm like it's an ice rink like can you just turn off ice rinks maybe i don't know what i'm talking about but i you, you you could just turn off an ice rink and then it just all melts and then you could turn it back on and then it all freezes up again. I I I, I didn't know. I thought I thought ice rinks were just solid ice most of the time, but I could be wrong because you think about it, it probably would take forever for uh, the water to freeze if that if that's the case. But they didn't even show any you know water. It was just it turned on a switch and then stuff just ice just started appearing. Maybe that. Maybe that's how it works. I have no idea. I'm no expert on ice rinks, but it just seems like it was way too convenient and way too quick. And it worked way too fast for an ice rink that was apparently shut off or broken. And then they turn on a switch and then it works perfectly. Or maybe not. Well, no, the, the studio lights, because that's another thing. Like the ending doesn't even know what they don't even know how to end the film properly. They, freeze the blob with the ice rink and then there's this scene with the sheriff who is is being filmed by the new news by the media and they're using these hot lights and it melts and so he's he's while he's in the middle of his speech the blob essentially is unfreezing and it's pooling around his leg and then the movie just ends and you have like the end with question marks and i'm like yeah i got a question why the fuck was this made who asked for this who asked for a incredibly cheap garbage sequel to the blob that opens up with a fucking kitten in the middle of the field just prancing around who asked for this shit film where people get killed by strawberry preserves but you know that's just that's just me but really, what kind of ending is that? It's so anticlimactic. It's like, okay, we stopped the blob. No, we didn't. The blob is uh, is unfreezing, and it's. It, I guess it's just going to eat everybody again. Great. Lovely. Um, Not that I would really care that much, because no one in this cast, no one in this script is at all worthy of me giving a shit whether they live or die. And people just act in dumb ways, too. Like, there's this girlfriend of Garrett Graham's character. And she clearly sees that he's he's done for. His car's crashed into the blob. He's done. He's toast. He's dinner for the blob. And she's like, no, oh my god. I, and she just runs over to go check on him and gets eaten by the blob. I'm like, yeah, serves you right. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, there's just so many, just even like just the way the blob gets unthawed because the wife is like, oh, I don't want this thing in the fridge. And the guy explains, well, it needs to be refrigerated. It's like, oh, you can refrigerate it somewhere else. It's like, well, humble honey, I kind of, it needs to be refrigerated. I can't leave this it, it, unrefrigerated. It needs to be frozen. Well, you can put it in an ice box. I'm like, no, that's not enough. I need to put it in the freezer. Well, not in my house, not in my f freezer. It's like, maybe he knows what he's talking about. Maybe just, if it's just temporary, just let him put it in the freezer for fuck's sake. It's not that big of a deal. 
Not like it's open. It's not an open canister. It's closed. Well, at least it was. Tell, you know, it, it got opened. And I know some people are like, well, you're thinking too much about this Blob sequel. Like, yeah. And that's because it's just a bad film with a bad script and a bad story. Like, if you had... I don't know, likable or somewhat engaging characters, you know, like uh, Meg and uh, Brian in the 1988 Blob remake, you know, something like that, then maybe some of the issues involving the logic of things could be something that I could overlook. But the fact that you don't have a single character that is remotely likable, engaging, or worthy of rooting for in any capacity it makes it so a lot of these other nitpicks and these other little foibles and these other little th flaws, it makes it so those things are so much more noticeable when it comes to films like this. And yeah, it's just an excuse for the blob to just squelch around and just eat some people. And if it was fun to watch, that would be one thing, but it's not. It's mostly boring. Because there's not a lot of variety in terms of the way that the blob kills people either. Uh, and it's just one of those movies where it felt like there was more effort put into these little skits or these moments involving these random hippie characters than really a lot of anything else. Like this whole scene that involves this guy, this hippie, who wants a haircut. So it goes to this barber and this barber guy is uh, uh, essentially trying to get him to leave. So he throws out this crazy price tag for the haircut. And it's like, yeah, it'll be $400. And then the hippie guy actually has the money. So now he's got to wash the hippie's hair and cut the hippie's hair. And, it, and it's disgusting and he hates it. All for just the blob to come out through the, the drain of the sink and then uh, eat them both off screen because there's a lot of off screen stuff that happens too, because it's a low budget film. And I'm just like, did we need that haircut scene? Did we need any of that? No, it's only there because the writers thought it was funny for some reason, but I didn't laugh once. So I, I, I mean, I know comedy is subjective and all, but to me, I, I, I don't really see the punchline. I don't see the joke here. The joke is that, that hippies have uh, 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 stinky, uh, bad, ha unwashed hair and, and, and hairdressers don't want to don't want to cut their hair. That's the joke. It's not much of a joke. Just like the whole stuff with the guy who's running around naked, because even before that, the blob comes in while he's in his bathtub holding his dog for some reason. His little miniature dog, uh, you know, maybe it's not a miniature dog, but, you know, it's, you know, the little small dogs and the kind of dog, not a chihuahua, but it's still kind of a dog that you would like put in a purse or whatever, you know, or some women would put in purses to be, to be uh, correct. But he has his little tiny dog and he's holding the dog and he's got, you know, this the tiny hat on and for some reason, he throws the phone out the window. It's funny because it's random, I guess. <laughs> so yeah, this script sucks. Just like the majority of this film. And the cast isn't really much better. The only time that this cast is at all somewhat tolerable at least briefly, is just, just to see some of these somewhat well-known actors just show up in this movie. Like, there's Garrett Graham. Why is he wearing a gorilla suit and acting like a complete dork? Uh, Dick Van Patten. What is he doing in this movie as a scoutmaster? Cindy Williams? She's just there as just a random hippie? Uh, Burgess Meredith? Why are you playing some old hobo? What the hell? You really couldn't get uh, uh, any other work other than old hobo in Beware the Blob in 1972? 
Uh, but yeah, that's really where the majority of any sort of fun comes with with this movie. It's just random cameos by somewhat well-known uh, stars. Otherwise, it's just really just bland, boring, just uh, acting by Robert Walker as the lead Bobby or Gwen Guilford as Lisa or Richard Stahl as Edward or or Richard Webb as a sheriff or Marlene Clark as Marianne. Um, and, and the same sort of stuff involving characters that are skeptical, which was a dumb thing that was really a problem in the original blob and it's a problem here well i don't believe you there's no way that their people are getting eaten by this blob and it seems like this is a sequel but maybe it's not maybe it's it's just a a, a, a remake or a reboot of some kind maybe it doesn't even actually tie into the original blob because there are scenes from the blob in this movie like one of the characters in the film is sitting down watching the blob so i'm like okay the blob movie exists within the universe of this movie does that mean that the events of the blob also exist and if that's the case why are people so surprised and 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 just incredulous about there being a man-eating blob and i was some people like why are you asking more questions or weren't you talking about the cast at this point? Because there's not much to talk about with this cast other than mentioning that, oh, Burgess Meredith was in this movie for one scene. And Larry Hagman is also in it with an eye patch for some reason. Um. Oh, and yeah, speaking of the, con the script, like, I'm just remembering things now uh, uh, about the screenplay that 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 I feel like I should... I, I should uh, uh, mention uh, because this film is mostly forgettable. So it, it kind of takes a little bit to kind of pluck some of the, the, the stuff out of your memory. There are not one, but multiple references to an avocado sandwich. Like, a, like the writer thought that that was just comedy gold, that you would have these two lead characters just continually talk about their cravings for an avocado sandwich. And I'm like, okay, all right. You like avocado. You like it on a sandwich. Maybe with some bacon. Why? Why are we making this an emphasis? That's what happens with bad films and bad scripts is when you have an emphasis on things that don't need to be emphasized. Like avocado sandwiches. Speaking of avocado, seriously, you would be better off just making an avocado sandwich with bacon and then eating that instead of watching this. <laughs> be a much more satisfying and uh, uh, worthwhile experience. Trust me. I mean, I'm not going to mention it. What What is there to mention about the cinematography by Al Ham or the editing by Tony De uh, Zaraga? Like, the cinematography is hammy. It really is. Uh, the film just looks very cheap. The cinematography doesn't do it any favors. The music by by uh, Mort Garson. God, this score is so bad. It's It makes a bad film even more bad. Like, even worse. Uh, and... Music to me is an underrated aspect of any film and a good score can elevate even a mediocre or so-so film and, or it can make a great film even better. A bad score can make a good movie not as good and it can make a bad movie just unbearable and that is that is definitely the case here, especially with the opening credits music. And the film's like 91 minutes and like, it feels like it's 191 most of the time because you're not having a good time watching it because there's no one to root for, no one to care about. The blob attacks, they're nothing special, nothing that uh, creepy or memorable or fun to watch. 
or creative. And there's just nothing to this film that really makes it stick to you in a good way. It's more like crap that sticks to the bottom of your shoe. So, yeah, I, I really got nothing else to say about the movie. I know I didn't mention the editing because there's nothing much, much to mention about that either. Because it's not like it's a particularly well-edited film either. So yeah, $150,000 budget definitely does show. And honestly, that's it, it looks like it costs less than that. And if you adjust that to inflation, that's that's way too much money for this swill. It really is for this just absolute gutter slime of a sequel. But anyway, I got nothing else to say about this movie except just please, for the love of God, do not subject yourself to this fucking movie unless you're somebody who uh, is really into torture. Like, if you're a masochist, go right ahead. Be my guest. But if not, skip this one. Just watch the 1958 Blob or the 1988 remake if you want your Blob fix. Just ignore this movie and uh, avoid it. Like, beware the blob is perfect. Beware. Yeah, beware of this bad movie. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, my rant on beware the blob. And until next time, I'll see you later. See ya.